I'm Major Paul Loco Lopez. I'm a member of the 2019 F-22 Raptor demonstration team, and the F-22 Raptor is America's premier air dominance fighter. It is a fifth generation fighter, so we're known for our stealth capabilities as well as our maneuverability. So whenever people come out to air shows, they see the jet do things that no other jet can do in the world. And it essentially just defies the laws of physics as well as uh, the laws of gravity. Um, and that's all based in part on the motors that we have, which are two Pratt & Whitney F-119 motors. Each motor produces 35,000 pounds of thrust, so that's uh, 70,000 pounds of raw power at your fingertips whenever you check those power in the afterburner. My dad was in the Navy, so we moved around, moved around quite a bit. We ended up selling down in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and in the Tidewater area of Virginia, you always have fighters just flying around. You know, in the south side, you've got the Navy. Uh, back then, it was flying their Hornets and Tomcats on the north side of the Chesapeake Bay. It was the Air Force flying the F-15C model, the Eagle. And just growing up in the Tidewater area, you'd always see jets flying around all the time. And I was captivated by just the graceful beauty of seeing fighter jets flying in formation or flying low over our house. And that's what inspired me to want to be a fighter pilot. Um, people would tell me that a dream without goals is a wish. So they were like, they would tell me, hey, figure out what the criteria requirements are to be a fighter pilot. And then write down your goals. And, you know, your goal is going to kind of be the pathway to make your dreams become a reality. So... I ended up uh, right now my goals and I knew based on if you want to be a fighter pilot, you have, and, and at least in the Air Force or the Navy, you have to have a bachelor's degree. So I went to college at North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University, got a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering, as well as uh, competed and qualified for a pilot slot to the United States Air Force pilot training. So once I got my bachelor's degree, I got a commission as a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force and went right off to pilot training. It took about a year to get my wings. And then I flew the F-15C model of the Eagle for about three and a half years. And I had the opportunity to transition to the F-22 Raptor. And I've been flying a Raptor for eight and a half years. And I just have over a little over a thousand hours in the F-22. Yeah, before I got my commission in the Air Force, I didn't have any flying experience, which is a testament just to kind of how um, serious the Air Force takes their training because they can, they can take a person with no experience in any one of these career fields and put you through some world-class training with phenomenal professional instructors and get you to where you need to be to perform the duties at hand. Hopefully you get a chance to kind of walk the grounds of the air show and film some of the, uh, the, uh, the static display airplanes because if you look off to your left, my right, you can see the airplane I first started off flying with. It's the white and blue airplane. It says CB for Columbus Air Force Base on the tail and that's the T6 Texan II. So that's the airplane I flew in my first uh, phase of pilot training, phase one and two. And then I, I went on to fly the T-38, the Talon, a supersonic jet trainer for phase three and then i went on to fly the f-15 eagle everything is staged in the air force so it takes a year to get your wings so the very first month of pilot training you're in academics learning about systems uh air force rules and regulations and just how the air force operates at a military base and how to fly in and out of bases after that first month then you hit the flight line and that's where you learn you actually put hands on the airplane where now you're doing ground ops you're working with the maintainers and the crew chiefs to get the airplane in the air safely and they're also working on takeoffs, landings, ground operations, how to do aerobatics in the airplanes. And once you demonstrate proficiency in that phase of flight, that's when now they'll take you up and start doing aerobatics as well as start doing cross-country flying where you fly from one base to another base or one airport to another airport. And then from there you start flying at night and they start doing some cross-country some uh, cross country and formation flying as well. The F-22 after along with the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, you have men and women that are 18, and the other uh, fighters in the Air Force, you have men and women that are 18, 19 years old working on them. And you got men and women that are 22, 23 years old flying these jets by themselves. And that's a testament to the training that you get in the Air Force, where if you have a passion to fly or you want to work on airplanes, we want you to be a part of our team. You can go to airforce.com to get information on that. You can follow the after demo team at, at F-22 demo team. But um, so the way to get you do, to fly the jet by yourself is for the first four to six weeks of training, uh, at the basic course for the Raptor, 
you're doing simulators every day, you're in academic classes every day, and you're learning about uh, the systems and how the jet operates, and more importantly, like if there's a malfunction, how to safely recover the airplane and keep yourself safe to get the jet back on the ground safely. So that within six weeks, they have you strapping this jet on and then you're taking it to the skies by yourself. I would say being an airman and being a warrior serving in the United States Armed Forces is no different than somebody who's working out there in industry as far as when it comes to time, family life, the work-life balance because we all, um, we're all professionals and it's all like um, taking care of the mission and taking care of your families. In the military, we like to say mission first, people always, and it's all about service before self. I mean, you got men and women right now that are serving abroad as well as here within the United States so that we can have the freedom to you know, perform at air shows and do interviews like this. Um, so I think it's all based on the individual and uh, just their family dynamic and family setup. You know, I think that's the beauty about the military is that we all come, come from various and diverse backgrounds coming together to kind of fly, find, win in airspace and cyberspace. So everybody um, tries to compartmentalize whatever's going on at home whenever they come to work and make the mission happen. But at the same time, if you need time off to go take care of the family life, then the military does a great job of giving you that time off because we need everybody to be the best airmen possible to help us accomplish the mission. As far as for me, I have a wife as well as three little kids. So um, it's just awesome just getting a chance to put on a uniform, serve my country, and then go home and then be a family man as well. Yeah, to the young kids out there, I would tell them to, if you have any inkling or any kind of passion towards aviation, whether you want to fix airplanes, design airplanes, build airplanes, or fly airplanes, try to go online, do some research, talk to your parents or guardians, try to find an air show that's happening close to your community and go there and interact with some of these uh, world-class aviators, maintainers, and performers and get all your questions answered. I would say don't let somebody's uh, perception of you become your reality. Don't let nobody tell you no because if you have a passion, do everything possible to make that dream become a reality and fulfill your passion. You know, people say a dream without goals is a wish. So, you know, find your trusted advisors, your parents, your teachers, your guardians, your friends, people who love you, people who are going to encourage you. Let them know what you want to do in life. Share your goals with them and have them kind of quality check your goals. Like, hey, does this match up with the, with the criteria and requirements? And this is going to put you on the path to making your dreams become a reality. As well as don't be afraid of adversity or challenges because you know what? Everybody wearing the uniform, all the adults walking around out there, we've all faced our fair share of adversity and challenges. And you know what? We've raised our hand let somebody know that, hey, we're, we're having a tough time. And there are people who are bent over backwards to help us all out, get to the, where we need to be.